Welcome to our self mastery journey where we are here sharing our tools and our experience and things that we have implemented with our clients all around holistic health, building self-worth, confidence, coming from burnout, fatigue, stress, building relationships that you enjoy and you desire and surrounding yourself with a tribe and community of like-minded individuals. So without further ado, let's dive in. Welcome everyone to episode 28 of our self mastery journey. And in today's episode, Michael and I are going to be getting into what to do when you struggle with low energy and lack of motivation. Now, this is really, really big. You know, we see this a lot with our clients. Most of our clients who come in are dealing with low energy, low energy, lack of motivation. They have busy schedules. They're usually when they're coming to us, feeling exhausted throughout their day, having bodily aches and pains. They're constantly going for stimulants. And so we thought, why not make an episode around this of tools that we have found helpful in our world, especially when we found ourselves in complete utter exhaustion or going for those stimulants or going straight for the coffee or not getting a good night's sleep, especially with busy schedules and giving you tools for you to implement in your world. And if you do find tools in here and you implement them and you find them helpful, please like, comment, subscribe. If you're following us on YouTube, that is super helpful in this world. Maybe even sharing it with someone who might also find these tools helpful. Or if you're listening on a podcast platform, if you can leave us a review, that's super helpful because our goal is to continually giving you tools and keeping it in a digestible um, bite-sized piece. So we try not to make these too uber long, but giving it to you in a bite-sized digestible piece with action steps that you can start having more energy. You can wake up feeling refreshed. You're not feeling the midday crash. You're, you're having more confidence in yourself because when we have that low energy and we're not following through and we're breaking that trust with ourselves, like it really becomes this domino effect mm. of, of, you know, low confidence, low self-worth, not really maybe feeling in our purpose or that we're on the quote unquote right track. And so hopefully today you can leave with some tools that will be very helpful. Yeah, and like you said, you know, with our, with our clients, for me, this has been the number one thing that clients come to me for help in is how do I get more energy, right? And then that energy, you have motivation when energy is there. The more energy you have, what I have found in coaching is the more motivation and motivated you will feel and have to actually show up for yourself and to do the things that are dream affirmative and that give you energy and that feed into you so that you can feed into others. You know, like we, we talked about uh, on the last podcast episode with, with stress and how stress can slowly kill you. And we named a few of the different types of stressors that happen. Well, when your body is under stress and when you are under stress, lack of motivation is very common to have. Mm. Lack of energy is very common to have. Lack of discipline when it comes to choosing the things that are necessary for you to grow in an alignment with where you want to go with your health goals, with your family goals, with your work performance goals, whatever goals you have, that stress is going to leak out and that stress is going to cause that lack of motivation and that lack of energy you guys on yeah well in 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 this like a common theme i see with a lot of my clients and i see with a lot of people who are trying to get out of the low motivation yeah. they get this um they finally hit that point of like the little bit of space when they are feeling motivated and they're mm -hmm. like i'm going to change this and i'm going to change this and i'm going to change this and i'm going to change this yeah and they create this control fatigue in themselves because they're trying to change everything at once and then they start causing like michael was talking about more stress in their world because when you are changing aspects in your life you have to cognitively think about it mm -hmm. and make it an action step because it's not a habit yet and so it will be causing more stress until you make it until you make it a habit. And, and there are things that we are gonna be getting into here that are action steps that you can do that are, are uh, energy building. But if, again, you try to do too much at once, it's, it's 
going to overload you. And, and it goes back to like talking about the stress that we were talking about. Even when you start having more energy, even when you start feeling more motivated, there are still going to be times in your world when you're not motivated. This is something that I was talking to people in our self mastery membership about is like, this is the big difference of where you see people where they are at in their life. Like they're achieving their dreams, they're achieving their goals, they're setting out, they're doing the things they love, they're having more happiness and confidence in their world compared to those people who are not. It doesn't mean that, that the people who are not are um, less than, it just means that the people who are are still showing up even when they are unmotivated. And so I know that maybe what I'm saying is kind of like sounds contradictory of like, hey, well, you just said I'm going to have more motivation, but at the same time, I'm still going to lack motivation at times. I see how that's contradictory and you will have more motivation, but to say that you're going to be motivated 100% of the time is just not authentically true. Yeah. And that's creating consistency in your world that's creating discipline in your world and this also comes back to thinking about the control fatigue of when you are choosing those action steps being really honest and clear with yourself of how much you can take on at once just incorporate one thing you know we're going to get into some of these things but just incorporate one thing don't try to incorporate five things so when you do feel like a lack of motivation it's like okay well, I just need to do my Tai Chi today, or I just need to go for a walk today, or I just need to get in bed on time today. But if you're like, I need to do all three of those things, and I need to have my meals this way, and I need to have my water this way, and I need to do X, Y, and Z, and none of those things are habit for you yet, you're going to be draining yourself of your resources. And so, yes, if you implement these, you will have more motivation and authentically reminding yourself you are not 100% of the time always going to be motivated. And we'll get into some tools of what we do of how to continually work through that. But that little snippet right there of being really honest with yourself is one way to be very clear when you are getting that lack of motivation, like how to get through that. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's important that that was clarified because like you said, even when you are doing all of the things that are supporting you in your in your health journey and your goals you know to to say that you're going to 100 percent be motivated every time like kirstie said it's just not true you're, you're not i have not been motivated every day you know for since i've started taking better care of myself there's been days where i've had higher motivation and lower motivation and a lot of that like we said earlier is dependent upon the stress that you're going through and is dependent on the lifestyle factors you choose to implement in your life. Yeah, and in a, a big, a big corporate of what we notice, culprit, culprit yeah. that we notice plays in a lack of energy and plays in a lack of motivation is saying yes to too many people that are not yourself. A lot of people who are struggling with low motivation are constantly giving from their reserves. They are doing things for other people. And I, and I get it. People are busy individuals and you have families and you have partners. And, and yes, there are all these responsibilities. And it is like the airplane analogy. If you do not put your face mask on first, you cannot help anyone else put their face mask on for our face mask on after. And so being really clear what are you saying yes to, being really clear what is taking more energy away from you. When, when I talk with my clients about their schedule and we start breaking it down and seeing where their energy is going and seeing why at the end of the day are they so tired and lacking motivation to do their Tai Chi or in the morning, why are they so tired getting out of bed, lacking to get up, wanting to go straight for the stimulants? Where is their energy going? And one of that big ones is saying yes to too many people. Yeah. And you know, and <clears throat> I believe we gave uh, an example of an action step on the last podcast episode of the scheduling it out and, and identifying. I think it was just identifying your stressors. But <clears throat> in this case, um, you can identify where your energy is going out and how much energy you're bringing into yourself. I think that would be a great uh, thing for you all to reflect on. You know, look back in your in your daily life. What's what's your schedule look like? How much are you giving at work? 
How much are you giving at home? How much are you giving to your partner, to your kids? And then look at, okay, how much energy do I actually have to give to those things? And if it's the answer is I don't have a lot of energy, that's when it's time to start focusing inwards and put your mask on first, your air mask so that you can start breathing properly. And then when you're able to start breathing properly, you've got the energy and it's not just breathing. There's other things you can do to help, you know, fulfill this energy, but breathing is definitely one way you can help to cultivate more energy in your life. Uh, just, you know, 20 minute breathing practices, just standing meditations, things like that. But when you take the time to pour that love into yourself and to make yourself that priority and the main character in your story, you then have the energy and the motivation to not only continue putting yourself first, but then also give to other people whenever it's time to, you know, and part of recuperating this energy and recuperating that motivation and keeping a consistent momentum within your energy levels and within your moment, uh, your motivation is, is going back to the basics. Start small again. And this kind of plays I wanna, into that. I want to go back to, because I had something to say on the last point and you just kind of kept <laughs> running with it there. We're not saying drop everything and go live in the wilderness. We're not saying drop everything and um, you know spend hours on end because to yourself because that is not realistic. You obviously have a job, you have a family, but just taking 10 minutes out of your day and starting small, you will slowly start receiving more energy and realizing how when you take that time for yourself, you actually have more energy to get these tasks done quicker because you're not low on energy where that starts opening more time in your schedule for you. And I would piggyback off that. When you're low on energy and you're trying to take those tasks on, you're gonna find more mental mistakes. You're gonna find more physical mistakes. So taking those 10 minutes for yourself, 20 minutes for yourself to rebuild your energy is also gonna rebuild your focus and clarity of mind and presence of being so that you can show up more fully into your purpose and into your power for whatever it is that you're doing. It could be just writing a bunch of emails, could be teaching a bunch of kids, could be whatever it is. When you take that time for yourself, you're gonna have more energy to give into the tasks you're choosing to give into. And I think it's a very beautiful point that you brought back into. And you also did kind of say it, you know, start with starting the small, that's where I was going to head into it. Start, start with small things. Start with small things that you can start honing in and bringing more energy back into your life. From the lifestyle factor point of it, some things that I would do and I've coached my clients to do is this week or the last few weeks, they've been under quite a bit of stress and it's been hard for them to implement a lot of changes. So I would you know, dial it back and say, let's just focus on one action item for the next week or the next two weeks. And maybe that action item is just, let's be hydrated. Let's make sure that we're staying hydrated every day. And we're gonna focus on that. Because when you're properly hydrated, you're gonna have higher energy levels. You're gonna have optimal digestion. Even if you're not eating clean foods, if you're properly hydrated, is you're gonna eat more easily, digest, assimilate, and eliminate the foods that you're using, which will convert into energy naturally. You're also gonna be more clarity of mind. You're gonna have so much more clarity of mind and less mental fog and mental fatigue. And you're just, your emotional levels are also going to get regulated, all just from making sure that you're properly hydrated. Getting water is free. You know, unless you buy it from a bottled water, you know. Well, I or, I would also make an argument on that, though. Yes, water is free and... I guess what I mean quality is... Quality water... You're right. ...is not free. You, you do want to do, go for quality water. However, that would also fall into the category of, you know, making this choice to drink this quality water is going to be more dream affirmative to me because it's going to be supporting me at the cellular and molecular level. Right? Our bodies are always turning over new cells and water is one of the key components to help rebuilding the cells and rebuilding your ligament tissue and rebuilding your muscle tissue and your brain tissue. And so it's, it's super important to get quality water uh, <clears throat> for sure. But staying highly 
hydrated throughout the day is going to help cultivate more energies and maintain those energy levels, right? So if you're not properly hydrated, even if you did have the energy, you won't be able to maintain the energy that you have because of it, if, that, if that's making any kind of sense. And then another thing you can go back to, and it's, again, super simple, is dialing in your sleep. Get into bed on time. Make sure you get your hours of rest and recovery and recuperation for your body. From 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock, your body's physically repairing itself. 10 o'clock p.m. to 2 o'clock a.m. Your body is physically repairing itself. And from 2 o'clock a.m. to 6 o'clock a.m. or upon waking, your body is psychologically repairing itself. And so if you miss any of the times between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. with your sleeping, you don't get those hours back and you shorten the amount of rest and recovery time that your body actually has and utilizes to create more energy for yourself so that you can be more motivated, so that you can be more productive, so that you can be more involved in whatever it is that you're interested in being more productive and involved in. Sleep is very crucial when it comes to recuperating and rebuilding that energy. And if you don't have a proper sleep schedule, that is going to contribute heavy into not just the amount of stress you're going to feel because you're going to be under a lot of stress without it. Your clarity of mind isn't going to be there. Your emotions will not be properly regulated. There's a good chance you're going to have a high irritability rate and your patience level with people or things, even simple things, may not be as high as they normally are. And so sleep and water are two huge crucial components to your health that are relatively inexpensive and that are very easily implemented whenever you choose to implement them in your uh, daily lifestyle factor choices to recoup the energy that you've lost or recoup the motivation that you are seeking. Yeah, and, and you know, thinking about sleep, um, I wanna add a few points on that mm -hmm. is, is if you are struggling to have a wind down routine, start thinking about, are you on electronics late at night? Are you taking stimulants? Are you having a coffee midday? Are you having sugar midday? You know, you really don't want to be having anything that's really sugary after 3 p.m., which, you know, most of my clients, they're still having something at 6 p.m. and 5 p.m. And because sugar has a half-life, it's still going to be in you it's still going to be in you even if you go three you know six hours down it's still going to have a half-life in so if you ate a sugary treat at five o'clock and it's 1 a.m your sleep is still going to be getting disrupted so thinking about your wind down routine are you shutting your brain off are you you know um able to do a tai chi are you able to do a zone movement and and with that, a work in, are you, you can take any movement and you can make it a zone movement. All you have to do is make sure your heart rate doesn't elevate, your breath doesn't elevate, you're not sweating, your mouth stays moist, and you can do on a full stomach. You can sit there and do the position of a deadlift, but you should be able to do it in a breathing format to help yourself slow down. And so if you have been following us, those are some things you can do. And if you have been following us, you've heard us talk about things that we've learned through our studies from Paul Check, and he has uh, six foundational principles. Yin is nutrition, hydration, and sleep. Michael was talking about sleep and hydration. hydration. And so with that, when you are low on energy and you lack motivation, you are, you are, you are too yang. You are doing too much. You are giving too much any energy outward. And so focusing on those yin principles, really looking at your food. What foods are you eating that are serving you? When you have your food, are you feeling energized? We're really big into not counting calories. Not counting calories is huge because it's not about counting the calories. It's about redefining the relationship with you and how is the food affecting you? How is the food quality affecting you? What do you feel in your body? Because if you're eating and you're feeling low energy afterwards, there's something in that meal that is not nourishing you to authentically have the energy to do so. And so looking at those principles 
and looking at each one and I get it. We, we've said a lot of different things where you're like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I don't even know where to start. This is overwhelming. You know, this is overwhelming. Like listening to this, this is where it's just like, take one section. If it's, if it's the sleep, start dialing in your sleep. If it's the hydration, start getting more water. If it is nutrition, start dialing in your nutrition. If it is doing work in, start doing work in. But it's what we are talking about is starting small, not doing it all together. And, and once one becomes a habit, then you can incorporate another one because then you're not thinking about it. For me, I don't have to really think about my water. I'm still mindful about how much water I drink a day, but I don't have to cognitively think about how much water I need to drink. Eating clean is pretty much a way of being for me. I don't yep. overly have to think when I am purchasing things because I, I know what to look for and it's very easy. Of course, there's still the planning of the meals and, and making sure that it's all out. But for the most part, it is my way of being and it has become a lot easier. So if you are low on energy, if you are unmotivated, take a few of these principles, take a few of these principles and just add them in one at a time until it becomes consistent and then add in more. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. I don't... Beautiful. I don't really have anything more to add on it. I mean, like Kirsty said, we, we did give quite a bit, you know, and we don't want to overly stimulate you to the point where you feel like, oh, this is almost impossible or feel like you're giving more energy out just to try to implement these things. You know, something we didn't really hit on that I'm, that's coming to me now is if are there things that you are showing up to in life that would benefit you if you laid back off of them for a little bit. We kind of said the yes thing. Took, took them out. Yeah, we kind of did say the yes thing. So it goes along with if you're saying yes to too many things, maybe say no every once in a while to a few different people and then use that space for yourself, right? Use that space to dial in your nutrition, to dial in your sleep, to dial in any of the foundational principles that we have spoken about, that we've learned through the Czech Institute. It's... um. It's, it's worked wonders for both Kirsty and I, and it's worked uh, for all of the clients that we've seen. You know, we've seen lots of changes in, in the positive, and, you know, it, 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 it does require you to show up to the work, though. You can't just, you know, do beneficial things for your health two days out of the week and then be like, okay, I'm good. You know, I don't need to do any more. Like, you you have to show up to these things. Consistently showing up to the lifestyle factors we're talking about with your sleep, your nutrition, your hydration, your mindset, your breathing, your movement. Consistently showing up to those things is how you're going to stay consistently motivated and how you're going to have consistent energy levels. And that's extremely crucial and I feel like we need to really stress that point here. You've got to show up to it. Yeah. Yeah, so if you have any questions, leave them below. If you want to join us for the extended version in our self mastery membership, we do weekly coaching calls, extended versions of these podcasts where we're going to get into four more points. Um, we also do assessments in there. We do once a month women's group, once a month men's group, you get our cookbook. You can apply below to be in that group and join us in there with amazing individuals. And outside of that, we are sending so much love and we'll see you in the next episode.